You know, when you were a kid and your parent would wrap you up in a quilt and you would feel so cozy and loved and safe, that's how wearing a quilt coat makes you feel. Hi everybody, I'm Eliza of All Kinds Studio and today we're going to be making a quilt coat. I've seen the quilted coat trend floating around the internet for a couple of months and obviously I couldn't resist, had to try them out. What's not to love? You can wear a quilt. Amazing. I started making and selling these a couple months ago, back in November, and I get a lot of questions about my pattern and my process. My pattern is a combination of a couple of different patterns that I purchased and then I've made a little tweaks here and there. My pattern is actually a one size fits most. I didn't want any body type to feel like they were excluded from being able to fit into my quilt coat pattern. If you're interested in making a quilt coat, my advice to you would be to go out and look at patterns, maybe make a list of what you're looking for in a quilt coat, and then pick out some patterns that check those boxes, make some little adjustments as you want, and then you'll get exactly what you're looking for. As for the quilts I use, I have been sourcing them from antique stores. I've also been buying them from people on Facebook Marketplace. I pretty much use exclusively quilts that have damages like rips or stains. I do this because those quilts have been loved and they have been used, but they're not really gonna be loved or used in the same way anymore. They're damaged, they've got rips or stains, they're not pretty to display, most people just have them tucked away somewhere. So I view it as I can take these damaged quilts and give them a new purpose and give them a new opportunity to be cherished and loved. All right. Let's go make a coat. Here is the quilt I'm using for today's video. It's so beautiful. I love the green grid and the nine patch quilt block pattern. To me, it feels so fresh and springy and it's a lighter weight quilt, so it will transition well between seasons. First, I lay out my quilt and check the whole thing for any areas of damage. Then I start laying out my pattern, trying to avoid any damaged spots. I usually end up rearranging my pattern several times so that I can cut it as efficiently as possible. You can see here I'm inspecting the quilt to make sure there are no damages where I've placed my pattern pieces. Then it's time to cut the whole thing out using my rotary blade, ruler, and a self-healing mat. I'm just gonna work my way around the whole quilt, cutting out all my pieces. And there you go, all my pattern pieces and the leftovers of the quilt, which I will save for future projects. Now I'm searching all the raw edges that will be exposed in the seams of the coat. Once that's done, I lay my front pieces to my back piece, right sides together, and pin at the sides, the shoulders, and the neck. I also put right sides together on each of my sleeves and pin. Then it all goes to the sewing machine. Right, we're gonna do our first try on of the coat. I haven't sewn the sleeves on yet, so it's gonna look like a vest. Okay, I am liking how the grid is lining up. That looks pretty good. So far, so good. Time to do the sleeve. All right, we're gonna start by turning the sleeves right side out. For the sleeves, I'm pinning right sides together all the way around the armhole, lining up the seam of my sleeve to the side seam of the coat.
Then I sew all the way around for both sleeves. are on so let's do a second fitting gotta make sure we sew the sleeves in right because I've done them upside down before mm, yes so cozy I think that's a good fit All right, we're in the second to last step of the coat now, which is binding all the raw edges. This is just gonna give the coat an overall finished look. And sometimes I like to choose a little pop of color for the edge, just some color to like brighten it up or go with it. Here I'm laying out all my bias binding options, just trying to find the perfect color to go with this quilt. Once I select my color, I give it a good press with the iron. Now I'm using a top stitch to sew my binding to the raw edges of my coat. I prefer to fold and hold it in place as I sew. This part is a little bit slow as you have to be pretty precise as you top stitch since this sewing will be seen on the outside of the coat. Then I like to give all my seams a little press open. The last step is top stitching the binding to the raw edge at the bottom of the sleeves. A little back stitch to finish, of course. And then snip, snip, and we're done. Time for the reveal. Because the coat is meant to fit a wide range of body types and not just me, I adjusted my pattern to be more accommodating. First off, I dropped the shoulder seam to accommodate people with broad shoulders. I also gave the coat a big collar and an open face so women with a more full figure wouldn't need to worry about buttons or zippers. I also gave the coat really long sleeves so they could fit someone who's tall. I'm not, so I like to give the sleeves a roll or two. And there you go, that's the coat. All right, that is it for today's quilt coat video. But before we go, I wanted to show you some of the other quilt coats I've made. We've got the red checker, very bold, very fun. And this very old antique star quilt with kind of some maroon, blue gem tones. And lastly, this peachy star with the hand knotting and the gold trim big favorite. This is the quilt coat that I decided to keep for myself. I just couldn't give it up. I love it so much. I love the color. It kind of reminds me of my grandmother who was a quilter, although her quilts don't look anything like this. I just, it speaks to me. I love it. All right, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're inspired to make a quilt coat of your own, let me know down in the comments. And if you wanna keep up with what I'm doing, you can find me on Instagram or visit my website. It's all linked down in the description. And I'll see you next week.